Hey guys, this slideshow is designed to give you a sort of big picture overview of the Revolutionary War. We'll be looking specifically at the strengths and weaknesses of both the American and the British sides and seeing what each side needed to do in order to win the war. By the end of this video, you should be able to state both the strengths and the weaknesses of the British and the Americans. Also, there are three vocab terms, loyalists, militia, and inflation, that I want you to know by the end of this video. Let's begin by setting the stage. So as you know, the war began in 1775 with the Battle of Lexington and Concord, but it continued uh, for a while at a sort of small scale and it wasn't clear exactly what the Americans were fighting for. Were they fighting just to uh, resist British taxation or were they fighting for something larger, independence? That question is answered in 1776 with the Declaration of Independence. And after that point, there was no turning back. At that point, the American patriots were faced with either completely winning the war, beating the British, or facing punishment as traitors against the crown. There was no middle ground anymore. The Americans now needed to win. What this means is that both sides begin for a longer, bloodier, and more serious struggle than they expected at first. Let's get started by looking at the strengths and weaknesses of the British side. Their major strength was that they possessed a large professional army filled with well-trained troops. These troops had a lot of experience and they knew how to follow orders precisely, even in the chaotic conditions of a battlefield. This is compared to American militias, which would often run away as soon as they were actually fired at. So this allowed the British to win a lot of battles where other less well-trained armies would have lost. The British also enjoyed support from American loyalists, and the loyalists were just Americans who believed that America should not become independent, but should remain loyal to the British crown. And there were many of these guys, especially in the South and the Middle colonies, and they would offer support and supplies and even soldiers to the British army. Uh, by the end of the war, up to 50,000 loyalists had joined the British army, which is a pretty significant boost for these guys. Finally, the British enjoyed support of slaves in the American South. This was because the British offered freedom to any slave who would join the army. By the end of the war, at least 14,000 uh, once enslaved Af African Americans had joined the British side and were fighting in the British army. And we know that there were at least 14,000 because when the British lost the war, they evacuated these 14,000 African Americans to Canada, where they could then live as free individuals. However, the weaknesses of the British side, uh, the British side were also very significant. First of all, the British were fighting across an ocean. 3,000 miles separated England from America. And this led to long delays in supply and communication. The British could get an order that was three months old that would no longer make any sense. And sometimes they would be very dangerously low on basic supplies like gunpowder and food. They were also fighting in unfriendly territory. What this meant is they didn't know the terrain as well as the colonists, and they were also at constant danger of sneak attacks. Even though the British possessed well-trained troops, they could not be on guard all the time against uh, angry colonists who would attack them in, night, at, in the night or steal their food or stuff like that. Also, Britain, during its rise to power over the last two centuries, had created enemies in Europe. They were hated both by the French and the Spanish, and this meant that they had to be careful during the war with America because the French or the Spanish might attack them at any moment. This meant that they couldn't use all of their military strength just on America. And finally, the British were fighting on offense. What this meant is they needed to crush the American forces. They couldn't just win a few victories. They had to entirely defeat America in a short time frame because they could not spend too long of a time in this war with the colonies. This was because they had to be concerned about possible wars against France or Spain. <laughs> 
Now let's look at the American strengths and weaknesses. Uh, one of the major strengths on the American side was that they enjoyed excellent leadership. And this is not to say that the British leaders were bad, but they were sort of just uh, your average vanilla flavored generals. But the Americans enjoyed excellent charismatic leaders who could inspire uh, feats of excellence and bravery in their troops. And of course, leading this whole affair was George Washington, who was the commander-in-chief of the Continental Army. And all reports say that he was an extremely brave man who would suffer with the troops through cold winters and radiated confidence and honor, and basically encouraged the troops to put up with hardship that normal troops would not deal with. Beside Washington, there was a Frenchman named Marquis de Lafayette, who became one of the leading American generals and inspired confidence in the Americans because he came from France and represented a promise that more French support might come later on. And finally, there was a German general, Baron von Steuben, who took over the task of training the ragtag American troops and turning them into a sort of professional army. And he proved to be quite effective in this, and he whipped the professional American soldiers into shape so that by the end of the war, they were beginning to win battles against the British Redcoats. Secondly, the Americans were fighting on defense. What this meant is that they did not have to crush the British army. All they had to do was avoid the British and drag the conflict out long enough that the British would quit. Uh, basically, they just had to survive, whereas the British had to kill the Americans. Third, there was widespread support. Even though there were many loyalists in the colonies, most Americans supported the revolutionary cause, and that meant that they were willing to help the soldiers out. Uh, they could count on receiving food supplies from nearby farms, and they could draft men to join militias or the professional army throughout the colonies, which gave them a huge advantage in terms of numbers of troops. And finally, there was the hope of possible assistance from France. As you already know, France hated the British, and they desired an American victory. So what this meant is if the Brit Americans performed well in the first stages of the war, they could probably convince France to join in and fight against the British. But there were also serious weaknesses holding the American side back. Uh, first of all, the American army was more or less an army of amateurs. What this meant is that few Americans possessed any sort of military training or experience. And the tiny professional army that they did eventually have, as trained by Baron von Steuben, uh, was mostly supported by lots of unreliable uh, volunteer militias. And even General Washington would sometimes complain about the militias. He would say that they would be blown away as easily as the wind. What that means is that as soon as they actually faced British fire, instead of standing and continuing to follow orders, they would just run away, making the American army uh, a lot weaker than it could have been. They were also poorly organized. The Continental Congress was pretty divided even after the Declaration of Independence. This was mainly due to the fact that different states believed that or didn't always trust each other. Uh, if you called on South Carolina to support people up in New England, the people in South Carolina would often question why this was necessary. So even though they declared that they were uh, working together in this struggle, there was still a lot of mistrust and lack of cooperation between the states. And finally, there were huge economic difficulties. Uh, Congress lacked the funds to pay for the war. And what this led to them doing is they began to print paper money. And they printed paper money so much that the money itself began to lose value. There was tons and tons of money uh, floating around, but not all that much stuff. So the m money began to lose its value. You would need thousands and thousands of dollars just to buy basic goods like food or clothing. And this is called inflation. That is when the money shoots up, or the money loses its value and things shoot up in price. Uh, this upsets a lot of colonists and leads to decreasing support for the American cause. It, life is getting harder for everybody because of the war. Now let's take a minute and compare America and Britain. Uh, first of all, we should note that the outcome of the war was uncertain. 
Even though Britain represented one of the major European powers, it had certain weaknesses that the Americans could exploit. And so because of the strengths and weaknesses, victory was possible for either side. Uh, Britain was in the, un the difficult situation of needing to crush the Americans before other countries would agree to help the Americans out. They had to crush America before France would join in the fight, basically. The Americans, on the other hand, just needed to stand up to the British long enough to win the support of foreign allies. So, the Britain, British needed a decisive victory, whereas the Americans just needed to survive for a while. So, there we go. That's going to set the stage. Tomorrow and the following days, we'll be looking more at the close-up details of the war, seeing how the Americans eventually defeat the British by bringing in French aid and some other brilliant maneuvers as well. So anyway, make sure you know the answers to these questions and the meaning of these vocabulary terms, and I will see you tomorrow.